Hi everyone, my name is Miguel de Villa and I'm an applications engineer here with Go Engineer. And today I wanted to share you this quick tip on how to edit and trim certain types of difficult geometry. So let's get started and I'm going to demonstrate the problem with this simple sketch of a couple of ellipses and a conic. So the story here is that I was helping a customer edit the sketch profile of one of his thin walled parts and his problem was that he wasn't able to trim certain portions of his offset sketch entities just like this one. He was able to draw the extra line segments he needed but was unable to form a single nice neat sketch contour by trimming the middle of these offset <coughs> sketch lines right here because as that message just showed one of the primary limitations of the trim tool is that you can only trim the endpoints of certain offset sketch entities like those of splines, parabolas, and ellipses. However, he still needed this functionality. So, after a bit of digging, I found a workflow that uses the split entities tool to generate additional line segments and sketch endpoints inside of the base geometry that then filter down into the final offset geometry, thus enabling us to use the trim tool as normal. So let me go back a couple of steps here and let's get let's get ready to show you this workflow. So let's start with the first step of this workflow, namely splitting up our base geometry into multiple line segments. And we're going to accomplish this again with the Split Entities tool. This is a tool that's normally found when you right click on a sketch entity that you want to edit. In the menu, you can navigate to Sketch Tools and find Split Entities right here. Or, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead, quickly search for the command, and add it to my command manager right here. Once we use the Split Entities tool, it's a simple matter of selecting locations close to where we ultimately want to add our trim geometry. So right around here and here. In addition, we're going to do it for this conic as well to demonstrate its effect on open contours, not just closed ones. So now we've split this geometry. Let's go ahead and use the good old offset entities command make an offset just like so. Do that for the conic right here as well and notice that when I offset the individual line segments it still has enough information so that the offset sketch entities carry the appropriate shape of the whole original line. And we can see that for each case of the, sp <coughs> the split offset entities we have multiple line segments as well. Now it's a simple matter. Let's make a quick test. Some line geometry over here. And quickly trimming the endpoints to suit. And because we added those additional line segments and those additional endpoints, we're technically not violating that rule that we saw earlier. We're just finding clever ways around it. We can do the same for this conic as well, because that's another case where we would run into this rule. And there we go. That's pretty much the easiest case of how this works and the general workflow to get the kind of trimmed, compound, complex sketches with these types of offset geometry. But let's go over a few other use cases. Let's take a look at case number two, splines, a type of sketch entity commonly used when creating complex organic 3D shapes, as well as guides for other features like lofts and sweeps. Here I have a couple of fixed splines. One is a regular spline that you'd see every day, and the other one is a style spline, which is great for making much more controlled shapes. We're gonna use the same workflow again, using the split entities tool to split it close to where we intend our additional sketch entities to be once we add them and trim them. 
say right around here. Now when we use the offset entities command on any one of these line segments, we have the ability to create an offset spline that carries the same offset relation and behavior when modifying it. Now, all we need to do is add that extra geometry that we want to add and trim to suit. Again, it's a simple process of deciding where you want to edit your splines, how you want those edits to, to come about, then using the split entities tool to split up the original base geometry into multiple line segments, then finally hitting that offset entities command and getting that offset spline or sketch entity that you want. A thing to be cautious for, especially when it comes to working with certain types of splines, like we see here. Because we split it up, it is missing a bit of that tangent relation, so at times it may be necessary to re-add that in if that's the type of behavior you want to continue seeing in your sketch profile. A couple of quick clicks, edits, and we've added the behavior again. So look. Up next, let's take a look at some 3D curves. So for this next example, we're going to take a look at curves. And curves are a bit unlike regular sketch entities in that they're more like features. They live in your feature tree, and they're generated from certain types of data. In addition, we don't have the ability to edit them parametrically like we would other types of sketch entities. We can't just draw lines and clip away segments in between because in order for this curve to exist it needs to be a continuous line through the various data points it's selected for the type. Take for example this airfoil I have right here which is generated from a spreadsheet of values for a type of airfoil. So how do we edit this? I want to make a shell that I then want to add a couple of tabs for use in an assembly. The answer is easy. We're going to start a new sketch like the one I have right here and simply use the convert entities tool in order to turn it into a regular sketch entity. Then it's a simple matter of following that same workflow, of splitting the entities close to where I want them and hitting convert or rather offset entities right there, specifying our desired values and letting the sketch take care of itself for us. Now we just add our desired shape and trim to suit. So again the key here really is to know that what we need is sketch geometry. When dealing with curves the best solution is to always start a new sketch convert that curve into a sketch entity on that sketch plane and then start editing and working with it with all the tools we've discussed before. So for our fourth and final example I have here a 3D curve that curves in and around in 3D space and I want to edit this to add some line sections in the middle. Again we're gonna go ahead and make a sketch in this case I went ahead and made a blank 3D sketch and used convert entities to convert that curve into actual sketch entities for me to edit but if I go ahead and try and add my extra lines like so and try to trim them like I would normally then I would run into error. This line has now become unsolvable because of how we chose to break up the original converted 3D curve and so we need to use our regular workflow of using split entities to break it up close to where we need our edits to be made and then adding the lines after that. And now since we've split up that curve into multiple line entities like so, we are free to trim it since these individual line segments have more than enough information for themselves to not spit out that error 
and keep themselves nice and whole, just like so. And with that, we've covered all the different cases for this particular tip. And again, if you want to edit, trim, modify some offset spline or sketch geometry, like parabolas or conics or curves, just remember the simple tip of using the split entities tool on the base geometry and then using the offset entities command. So that when you go and add your extra features, you have more than enough endpoints to modify, trim, and fix up your geometry as you need it. Thank you so much for listening. This is Miguel de Villa, Applications Engineer here at Go Engineer, signing off. Have a wonderful day.